Hey everyone, I'm Andy Raffel from eTentix.com and today is a day that we've kind of all been waiting for. It's time to look at some 7 nanometer Navi goodness. So to start with, as you can see, we've got two cards here. We've got the Radeon RX 5700 and the 5700 XT. First things first is let's get the pricing out of the way. So this one is actually going to be launching at $379, whereas the XT is going to come in a little bit more at $449. Of course, we have seen from Computex and E3 when Lisa Su actually unveiled it, there is going to be a 50th anniversary version of the XT. That's going to come in with an ever so slight more premium at $499.99. So now that that's out of the way, obviously, what do you actually get for your money? Well, let's talk about specs. So specs wise, looking at the RX 5700 to start, it has 36 compute units, 2,304 stream processors, and a slightly different way of actually looking at the clock speeds. So we have a 1725 megahertz boost clock, or at least up to that speed, a 1625 megahertz game clock, and a 1465 megahertz base clock. Obviously we do have 8 gig of GDDR6 and all the other usual stuff that you'd expect. Moving over to the XT, we can see 40 compute units, 2,560 stream processors, a boost clock up to 1,905, a game clock of 1,755 and a base clock of 1,605. Again, 8 gig of GDDR6. Now it's also worth noting that with both of these cards, they do have the same power connectors, but the XT actually uses a little bit more power. So with the normal model, we're looking at 180 watts, whereas with the XT, we're looking at 225 watts. I'm guessing a lot of that's actually going to come down to the cooler, because as you can see with both cards, they do feature a blower style fan. And you will see from our results that yes, they are a little bit noisy, but please, it is worth remembering, we did all of our testing on an open air test bench. With a blower style card, they really do kind of benefit from having them inside a chassis, and it will kind of get rid of all that, I guess, high end whining noise that you'd expect from a blower style card. Now, design wise on these cards, you can see that they do look very, very I guess similar to each other as well as other cards that we've seen in the past. The only kind of major key differences that you're going to see is this one has this, I want to say bend or imperfection. It's one of the weird things. Every single person that I've spoken to has a different sort of thought on it. Some people like it, some people don't like it, but it's got you talking about it. And I think that is what AMD have actually tried to do here. You know, it's a bit like when you see a, an advert on TV. You remember the bad ones, you never remember the good ones. So there you go. The only other kind of major difference, I guess, is going to be the lighting on the XT and the fact that it has a backplate compared to the non-XT model that doesn't feature a backplate. Now, there is a lot of technologies invested into these graphics cards because they do use RDNA or Radeon DNA. And some of that technology is actually really going to help you whether you're a creator or a gamer. So let's talk about that a little bit. So as I said in these specs, there is something slightly different when it comes to the clock speed. So instead of just having base and boost, we now have a game clock speed. So this is basically a target that is under typical load when you're gaming. You also get things like Radeon Display Engine, which gives us access to FreeSync 2 HDR through the HDMI 2.0 or DisplayPort 1.4 HDR ports. This is especially handy when you're looking at stream compression and uh, using, I guess, higher resolution displays with higher refresh rates, such as 4K 240, 4K HDR 120, and 8K HDR 60. Talking of streaming, we also get through the Radeon Media Engine, the access and the ability to use H.264, 4K150 and 8K30 decoding, as well as many other decoding variables if you are a Twitch streamer or YouTube streamer. Of course, with these cards and also the fact that AMD have brought out the X570 chipset with their new Ryzen 3000 generation processors, they are PCI Express 4.0 compliant, giving us up to two times the amount of bandwidth compared to PCI Express 3.0. This also means that it's better for the likes of content creation. So for people like myself who do videos very much like this, content creation is an important thing. If I can get things done quicker and more efficiently, it saves me time, which means I can bring more content out to you guys. That's where these cards really do shine. Now, before we actually look at the results, I just want to talk about the blower style fan one more time. So I think there's no point me kind of taking apart the cards and dissecting it. There's so many other people out there on the written and the YouTube side of things who are more than capable of doing that. I think for the most part, the only people who are going to do that are going to be people putting it under custom loop. And at the moment, there aren't any water blocks. As soon as there are, that's probably something that I'm going to look at doing with more than likely the XT model. So yes, we will look at that. But if you do want to sort of, you know, delve into that a little bit more, we have got some figures based around acoustics as well as power draw as well. So I guess without further ado, let's look at those glorious benchmarks.
So there you have it. There's the benchmarks for you all to see. Now, I've actually got my phone in front of me because I want to dissect just a few of them a little bit. So when we're looking at 3D Mark Fire Strike Ultra, you can see basically the XT did better than the 2070 and the uh, non-XT model kind of, you know, was just below a 1080. So when I actually look at sort of figures like that, you've got to think about price. A 2070 is about $100 more expensive than this. Yes, a 1080 Ti uh, Founders Edition did beat it, but firstly, try and find a Founders Edition. Secondly, they're not available to buy brand new anymore, and you're not going to get some of the new technology that you would through like Fidelity FX and some of the new features I already spoke about with these cards in terms of streaming. So it's definitely worth considering that. When it came to 3D Mark Time Spy, we was looking at obviously the Radeon 7 was slightly above the XT. Yes, you're going to pay more for it, but it did actually beat out the 1080 Ti in this one. Um, the 5700 did beat a 2060 OC Pro. So these are reference models. So imagine when an AIB card comes out, what kind of results we're actually going to be getting with them, with maybe higher boost clocks and um, you know better coolers, which will allow you to kind of boost or maybe even overclock a little bit further. In 4K uh, Unigen Superposition, again, we saw quite similar results. The XT sort of beating out the 1080 and the 5700 uh, beating out a 1070, not quite um, on par with a 2060. But again, looking at pricing and the performance of how it kind of stacks up, it's kind of where we expected it to be. Now, when it comes to kind of real gaming tests, AMD, I guess we're claiming this one to be the ultimate kind of 1440p monster, whereas the non-XT model to be the ultimate 1080p monster. And that's kind of what we saw. So in Deus Ex Mankind Divided 1080p, we saw this um, actually beating out the 1080 Ti and beating out the 2070 on both of these cards. Yes, Deus Ex is kind of geared towards AMD, but still it's a, a figure that we needed to look at. When you got to 1440p, these both of these cards perform very, very similarly, and they actually outperformed 2080. 2060s, 1080Ti's, 2070s, literally the only things that were above this were 2080Ti's and a Radeon 7, all of which are quite substantially a lot more expensive. Now when it came to 4K, there was a little bit of chlorine back from Nvidia, but still the XT was only just behind a 2080, still beating out a 1080Ti and way above a 2070, whereas the 5700 was pretty much on par with a 2070. And again, the 2070 that we actually pitted it against was an AIB card. Battlefield 5, similar sort of story. These did extremely well at 1080p, the same at 1440. At 4K, yes, it dropped down a little bit and the RTX cards took over, but still, the XT beat a 2070, a more expensive card and a pre-overclock card. That was uh, that particular one, the Extreme RTX 2070 from Gigabyte. So these are reference clock speed cards. We're comparing them against pre-overclock cards. Ghost Recon Wildlands, very, very similar story. 1440p, this actually got very near the end, at uh, the top of the stack. 4K, they never touted this as being a 4K monster, but it sort of, you know, rolled with the punches and did very, very well. Far Cry New Dawn, exactly the same. 1080p, these... Yeah, I don't even need to go through any more of these, guys. You can see, for the money, these are amazing. I wasn't expecting them to be groundbreaking. AMD, as we all know, have typically been known in the past to kind of do refreshes of refreshes of refreshes. Now we finally have something new. I'm not saying it's all about seven nanometer. That's not what's kind of, you know, broken the mold here and, and given them that extreme performance. Yes, it's one piece of the puzzle, but AMD really seem like they actually might be back. And more so, I'm excited about the AIC cards because as soon as they hit, I think we're gonna see the sort of the gap between say the RTX 2060 and 2070 cards that are kind of competing with these that gap is going to get even larger and the AIB cards are obviously going to push through even more performance due to the better cooling because some people aren't going to be a fan of the blower style cards and that's going to allow you to have cooler temperatures and obviously faster clock speeds because of that. I'm really excited about what AMD have done here and yes I know Nvidia have brought out their super cards and sadly we didn't get sampled on that um, but in two days time after watching this video we will have a, a video on the super card and I guess throw that into the mix but for now yeah the 5700 and the 5700 XT pretty damn good pricing pretty damn good performance pretty damn good features fair play AMD you finally did it Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do and I will see you in the next one, guys. Let me know in the comments section below. Which one are you gonna go for? You're not gonna go for an RTX 2060 or 2070 now, are you? These offer better value, but maybe Nvidia can do something with their pricing. Who knows? See you later, guys. See you in the next one. Bye-bye. So as I said in the specs, we have something called game clock. So this 
You also get other things like Radeon Display Engine, which gives you display port. You also get things like Radeon Display Engine, which is. You also get things like Radeon Display Engine, which gives us Radeon 3 3 3 sync. You also get things like Radeon Display Engine, which gives us access to 3 sync. Why do I keep saying 3? 3. So there you have it. The benchmarks are there for all you to see. For all you to see. Right. So I guess with that, I don't really want to sort of delve. Meh. Don't know where I'm going with this. Right.